Alright guys, King David King, King David King, 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 is back with another episode of the full playthrough of Gerda, A Flame in Winter! The previous episode didn't went too bad, like I was expecting much more trouble. Instead it went pretty smooth, I guess. And, uh, wow, well, I don't know actually what is gonna happen now in this episode, like, uh, I don't know what to expect. In this case, for example, I'm not expecting nothing too much troublesome, but maybe... Who knows if this episode is going to be troublesome or not? Yeah, I don't know, I don't think so, but we'll see, right? So, why stay here talking? I like to talk a lot, you know, but I think it's time to dig into it and let's find out and find out. So, yeah, you know, uh, let's change the camera real quick and uh, let's drop into some Gerda, a flaming winter action. Let's go. What a great game this is. Not bad at all. Tuesday, Tuesday, my pronunciation is good. Tuesday, February 6, 1945, 11 a.m. So, we have three different options. Mr. Vestergaard says he has no... Vestergaard man. Esther, the clinic Peter. and the England Inn. So where do we want to go? If we go to the England Inn, well, if we go to the England Inn... Okay... Esther if we go... is trying to escape by train towards Sweden. She might need my help to get past the new checkpoints in town. The clinic? We didn't see the doctor for forever. Mr. Vestergaard says he has no power over the Gestapo. But surely he or Margit can somehow help me break Anders out at the station. You know what? I want to go to Vestergaard's Manor. Mr. Vestergaard. Because there's important things in Vestergaard's Manor. Vestergaard is big, he's important, he's involved, he knows, and Margaret, is, she's my best friend. She was... She's kind of like a detective, she likes that, and he wants to know even about his father, so she can help me. I'm not here for Mr. Vestergaard, actually, but for Margaret, because Margaret can really help. I think. So, let's go. Yeah, to help me, right? Well, I hope. Behind closed doors, I went to seek the help of Margaret and her father. A feeling of unexpected anger washed over me as I learned, leaned my bike against the mansion's impressive staircase. Nah, come on. I need to speak with Margaret and her father. I know, I know, Gerda. My breath itches and my throat as I approach. Nah, come on, Gerda, you can do it. Mrs. Larson? Can I come in? I'm afraid now is not the best time. Please, Vera. This is important. Very well. Okay. Mr. Vestergaard and Miss Margaret are engaged at the moment. Perhaps it's best if you... Father! How can you say that? What's going on in here? Family matter. You'd better come back some other time. I need to speak with them now. Please don't try and stop me, Vera. An inconvenience? Is all is that is that all he is to you? Is everything alright, Margaret? Gerda? She looks on the verge of tears. I don't think I've ever seen her this angry. I'm sorry, sir. I tried to stop her. It's quite all right, Vera. You may return to your duties. But she... Vera... Very well, sir. I'm afraid you caught us at a poor time, dear Gerda. My daughter is acting like a child instead of the composed woman she ought to be. Perhaps you can talk some sense into her. Make her realize it's all for the best. The war is ending soon. And that soldier was only going to drag her into the mud. Oh, how can you say that? I loved him. You made me love him. Without your persistent needling, I wouldn't have... Oh, yes. My fault for betting on the wrong horse, so to speak. It seems a proper match at the time, but as you see, times have changed. So you expect me to just change my feelings at will? You have to be able to adapt, sweet Margaret. That's how you make in this world. And a young woman like you needs to find herself a husband. 
one who can provide for her. And we'll make sure to find you a proper one this time. Someone without any messy affiliations. But I have, I have my writing. Oh dear, we both know how well that's going, don't we? You're too soft for business, so marriage is what you'll have to do. You're a cruel, cruel man. I don't know why I didn't see it before. I, I have to go. Well, he's uh, ugly for real. I never knew her to be so temperamental. Are you happy now? She'll get over it, I'm sure. I don't think she will. Now, what can you do? I do for you, my dear? I should go check Margaret first. Yes? Yes, perhaps that is wise. I'll be here, should you need me. Yeah, later. But I think I will go to Margit first, and Margit will really help me. Margit must have gone to, the, to her room. I should check up on her. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, sorry. This way I don't even remember, sorry. This game, this way, right? Yeah, we're getting close. She's, she's actually showing all manner of garments into her suitcase. Margaret? I I can't stand it anymore. I'm sorry. I, I must look a proper mess right now. This town is too much. I'm leaving. I found Margaret packing in her room. She seems determined to leave town as fast as possible. I cannot say that I blame her. Right now? Where are you going? North. Somewhere north and far away from father. Are you sure that's a good idea? Well, I... She keeps winching in pain. Did something. Margaret, are you hurt? Oh, it's... It's nothing. Who did this to you? I was at the market yesterday, looking into my father's affairs and... Suddenly there was a crowd of angry faces all around me. They were shouting and cursing and throwing all sorts of things. Just because a wolf, Wolfgang and I. Can you imagine? I never knew our neighbors could be so cruel. Oh, please. Gerda, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I just want to forget. Whoa, Margie was beaten up. She was accosted by an angry crowd of Danes. What was that? Oh no, what is happening out there? Oh shit. Our conversation was interrupted by a sudden crash coming from the dining hall. We are ready to investigate. Oh shit. Mr. Vestergaard? Oh no, 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 no. I need him. Where the heck is Mr. Vestergaard? God damn it, he wasn't in here. Oh no, poor Vera. Gerda, come quick. No. She's lying on the floor. Her headpiece knocked slightly askew. And he's watching there? Is she alright? She must have come to investigate the crash. She's breathing at least. It seems some vagabond has thrown a brick through our window and entered the house. I don't like this at all. Do you mean they're in here with us? We should call the police. Leave it. Just wanted to make sure I got you all here. You've taken things too far, old man. You mean to shoot me then? Give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Wow, Gerda, I suppose I should have expected you to be here. Wow, a new fact. Assassinations. During the occupation, the residents would assassinate people who were suspected of being snitches of, or otherwise collaborating with the Nazis. Around 40, 400 Danes in total were killed by the residents. The assassinations of to, often took a heavy psychological toll on the members who had carried out the deed, especially when innocent by, bystanders were hurt or killed in the process. 
The killing also prompted the German occupiers to retaliate by carrying out similar assassinations on people who showed support of the Danish resistance. Birds of a feather flock together, but I'll make this quick. Wait a moment, let's, let's talk this through like civilized people, shall we? Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed your, your little foray into my factory last night. I expected to find the place in ruins, but it appears to be just fine. Not sure how that happened. After what I saw, I was ready to blow up the whole place. What did you see? Margaret, is it? I wonder if you know what, what your father has been up to. Tell me, Mr. Vestergaard. Did you really have to go so far as, as to use concentration camp labor? What? Concent... No, in Germany. Your father owns a majority stake in company using concentration camp labor to produce war goods. Wow, Vestergaard's devil's deal. Unknown person? Why this still looks to me so much like... This to me looks so much like Anders, but it's not. This unknown person right here... Is the snitch. A uh, who? I think they changed the silhouette, by the way. Vestergaard's devil deal. He owns a subsidiary factory in Germany that utilizes concentration camp labor. Better they work in my factory than somewhere else. Wouldn't you agree, Gerda? a point your ability to see it puts you two steps ahead of your radical friend here I let you jabber on for long enough it's time we end this and here I thought you would have appreciated the information that I fed to your people what well who do you think made sure you knew the Germans were storing munitions in the factory huh you you helped us attack your own factory what does it matter to me if you take German goods, huh? Of all the people to help us, I... I... You're still a corrupt el elitist, profiting from slave labor in concentration camps. I'm going to shoot you. Well, I assumed you didn't come here just to attack my housekeeper. Thought I should warn you. What do you think will happen to almost 300 Jewish prisoners who work for my business? If that business is gone, he slowly reaches for his breast pocket, leaves his pistol tracking his every move, and pulls out a printed letter. If you cannot read German, perhaps dear Gerda here can translate it for you. The camp's commander is anxious to get rid of those prisoners. I trust you know how the Nazis get rid of the prisoners. And if I anything should happen to me, well, you might as well be pointing the pistol at them. Now, just like last night, I'm well aware of your explosive plans for tonight. What? How? As a leader skilled in motivating people, I would have expected you to appreciate the same skill in me. Regardless of your obvious disrespect for me, I intend to once more respect your little endeavor and once again enable your efforts. Some guards will be called upon to secure my factory tonight, leaving other posts unnamed. Post where you might find yourself. So what is going to be, freedom fighter? Pull the trigger, dooming the people who follow you here and hundreds of innocent lives over in Germany? Or grow up and act like a big girl? You bastard, hiding behind the lies of innocence, have you no shame? God damn it, I don't have time for this. You think you've managed to get away with all? I won't be so sure. Wow, I don't expect a benefactor. Mr. Vestigar has agreed to help the residents' efforts by ensuring that there are less guards posted in the train station tonight. A shame about the window. Don't think I've gotten about you, dear Gerda. I know you intend to save Anders. Here, take this. Wow, it might come in handy. Again? Come in handy, this term. <laughs> Never mind. Just don't think in the wrong way. But father, 
How did you know to keep that letter on you? Did you really know he, she was coming for you? That was incredible. A good negotiator seals the deal before even getting to the table. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to make some calls. Oh, Gerda. I never imagined father would be involved in something as terrible as concentration camps. There's no way I can stay in this house a second longer. What are you going to do? I'm getting out of this house, out of this town. I'll take the train to Randers tonight. Just do it before the 8 p.m. train. Oh, I see. I don't know what you're going to do about Anders, Gerda, but I hope you get, I hope you get him back. Uh, Vera, oh, thank God. It seems she's waking up. You'd better get out of here before she does, or we don't hear the end of it. Someone had broken into the mansion, I knocked the maid unconscious, and I can't read because the game says this last part is not to be read. Okay, game. Wow. Oh, brought out the best in some and the worst in What others. an episode. Vestergaard had always been ambitious, but his greed pushed him further and further into collaboration. It's true that he directed some of his wealth and power towards helping those in need, even towards the resistance. But were these token gestures enough to make up for the harm he'd done? Was I wrong to accept his help? No. A man cannot simply buy, buy away his sins. Westergaard deserved to be punished for what he had done. There is no easy morality in war. Everyone gets their hands dirty, but we must do what we can to keep the dirt from spreading too far. Westergaard was not born a monster. It's in his own way, he was doing the best he could in the situation at the end. No, I think this one. There is no easy morality in war. This is the best. Everyone to me. gets their hands dirty, but we must do what we Even can I get my hands to keep dirty dirt a lot. from spreading too far. I think this was great. This was the the way to go. And. Uh, okay. Tuesday, February 6, 1945, 2 p.m. We still have a... Wow, we have different options. Next episode. Wow, let me change the camera. Or maybe... Let me go to the main menu first. Then we change the camera like I usually do. And... Uh, wow, okay? What an episode! This was another amazing episode, not like the one in the factory, that was, wow, amazing. But this was another of the top tier episodes, like, wow, like, Leva interrupted, like, everything happened. Concentration camps, Mr. Vestergaard, holy smokes, it's not like the Nazi in town. Concentration camps, that's really the worst, holy smokes. Children died there. They make soap of children. Are you imagine that? Holy fuck, Mr. Vestergaard. <laughs> but yeah, it's still trying to help. Even if just less guards or five dollars or take this five ammunitions more is nothing compared to concentration camps. But he's doing uh, his part. I mean, in in a situation like this, where Nazi have control on everything and everyone, even well, from what I, from my point of view, even someone important and big economically like Mr. Vestergaard and nothing. Like, it's kind of like Nazi control him too. If they want, Nazi decide, even on him. So, it's kind of like. I think he's trying to do his part to be with the Nazi so he have the freedom to do things and with the little freedom that he has because still they can see little freedom because the Nazi they had to control the little freedom that he has is trying to help so it's kind of doing his job even if it seems like he's doing really bad things at the start because maybe it's not true it's true like what he's doing is really bad but he's doing it for a cause maybe there is a reason, it's not like money. Not only at least, there's even trying to help people without getting noticed, I imagine. Because in Nazi period, like, 
they have control over everything like they have their dirty hands all over the place you know and so i cannot imagine mr vestergaard you know like come on leave my hands off me stupid nazi leave those fucking hands you know and it's kind of like he's covering himself i buy this factory so i make the danish work so they not get killed even if if it it is for concentration camps i buy those lands to make more of that but i put people to work danish people say so don't so they don't get killed or enslaved i have them i pay them well and i make them live i make my factory work even with a lot of nazis that control that but I, but i have my danish people working so i can pay them and make them live when i can without getting noticed i help this and i help that i have a little i help a little bit the resistance i help a little bit some poor people like when i can because i have things that i can give but i have to do it without getting noticed by the nazi you know it's kind of like the situation where some bad things he needed to do that in order to do those small things that are helpful because that's the way it works because nazi are on control they have their hands over everyone okay and so that's what i think and uh yeah well enough thinking and i'm talking about this like this was a really good episode and uh well thanks for watching guys leave a like comment and subscribe and we we'll see y'all in the next one bye